Hi, it's Maggie the Irish Gypsy here to bring you your January 2018 general readings. Thank you so much for joining us here today and welcome to any newcomers who may be with us for the first time and welcome to the new year of 2018, even though I am recording these in the last week of December. Thank you for all your support, feedback and comments and your likes and shares and subscribes. And uh, always a big thank you to those of you who continue to keep me so busy with personal one-on-one -on -one readings. Uh, if any of you are interested in a one-on-one -on -one reading with me, you can go to my YouTube channel's homepage, click on that About button. That will uh, give you a little more information and detail on what I do and the services I offer. I do a wide variety of readings uh, and one of the ones that's most popular this time of year are the six and 12 month overviews that I do which explore all the energies coming in and all the main areas of your life for six or 12 months. Uh, and while you can order them at any time of the year, the end of the year, I always get a lot of requests for those because people like to go into the new year kind of seeing what it's going to look like in uh, all the main sectors of their life. So that might be something interesting for you to consider for yourself or as a gift for friends, family, and loved ones. In addition to a lot of the other types of readings I do, you can check that out um, by clicking on the About button on my YouTube channel's homepage. You'll find my contact information there as well. You can also find my contact information attached to the description of every video I post. You can email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. You can also find me on the smartphone app Instant Go for uh, short, fast answers to quick questions as well. So check that out if you're interested. Make sure to check your rising and your moon sign videos as well if you know them and if you can. Uh, we always suggest you do that because <clears throat> some readings, some months, your rising and your moon sign, moon sign may resonate more predictively for you. And just watching all three can give you just additional insight and clarity into what's going on in your life. So try to watch all three if you know them and if you can. So let's get right into this reading. This is for the fire sign of Leo for January 2018. Leo the Lions, the fire sign of Leo for January 2018. Okay, Leo. We begin with the Nine of Swords, followed by Judgment. We have the Knight of Wands, followed by the Ace of Cups. We have the Eight of Cups, followed by the Six of Cups. And we have the world followed by the magician. And from the bottom of the deck, representing your overall energy for the month of January 2018 and guidance, we have the star. Wow. Lovely, lovely beginning of the year energy, Leo. Let me just take a look at this. You have four major arcana cards. So out of nine, including your crowning card, uh, there's a lot of, looks like January is going to be a pretty powerful, potentially significant month for you. Even though it looks like we're starting out with maybe a little bit of worry and stress, we have, although I am recording these at the end of December and time being somewhat fluid, of course, uh, one of the reasons we advise you to check your rising and your moon sign as well is because there's so many of you watching and of course it's not going to mean the same thing or resonate in the same area of your life to the same degree at the same time. Everybody's so different. So um, general overview here. So we end December 2016 going into January 28, sorry, we end December 2017 and enter January 2018. I hope I don't do this with all the videos. With the energy of the Nine of Swords and Judgment. So the Nine of Swords I don't really like seeing for you, Leo, or for anybody because it represents a lot of stress, anxiety, worry. Uh, but it's somewhat illusional, meaning typically when this card comes up, uh, it, it represents you're overthinking something. You're going around in circles in your head overthinking something. It's usually a card that shows up when people are worried about the future, worried about what might happen, worried about what might not happen. Uh, you know, maybe staying up late at night, just circular thoughts, things just going around and around in your head as well because swords is air energy and in the tarot, the energy of the suit of swords is internal psychological energy. It's all about what goes on up in our heads and our belief systems and what we think and how that affects the way that we relate and communicate with the world and the people in the world. So the nine of swords represents a lot of stress, anxiety, and worry, but it's too much. It's, it's usually... It's usually making things worse in your head than the reality of the actual situation or whatever it is that you're worried about is it, it 
it, it represents you kind of making it worse in your head than it actually really is in reality. So be vigilant against that energy. And when it comes up, you know, the best way to combat that is by actual truth and fact. Okay, I'm worried about this happening. Well, has it? You know, is there anything that you can do? You know, kind of using practical logic and truth to kind of combat fears, especially when there are fears about things that haven't happened yet. So be vigilant against that energy, Leo. Now, the Nine of Swords is uh, clarified and accompanied by the Major Arcana card of Judgment. Judgment is a call to action. It can be a it's a call. It can be a call about making a major choice, a major decision, uh, choosing a specific path. There's an air of finality about judgment. This uh, and, and the advice that accompanies judgment is is do not be spontaneous or impulsive about making any decisions, particularly significant decisions, which could have a really profound impact on your life or the lives of people around you. There's an air of finality to judgment, meaning that whatever decision is made, whatever choice is made, is going to have a pretty fairly lasting effect. You're not going to be able to reverse it or easily come back from it, if at all. So be careful about how you proceed and the things that you choose. So it looks like at the end of December, going into January of 2018, Leo, I feel like some of you are on one side of this and some of you are on the other, of course, because there's so many of you watching. The specifics and details are going to vary, but the energy fundamentally re remains the same. Some of you, you are in the position of trying to make a major decision or choice uh, about something, choosing a path, and some of you are waiting for a decision to be made. It could be in an actual legal situation. I feel like for some of you, you're waiting on a decision from an important person in your life. It could be a romantic partner, like a boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, uh, close friend. I'm feeling that for some of you, you're waiting for somebody to make a decision, make a choice, and I feel like for some of you in the relationship, this is about making a choice about the relationship. Some of you are in the position of being the one that needs to make a significant decision. Now, <clears throat> some of you, this is going to be in the relationship area of your life. Some of you, it may be in job, work, career area of your life, or even a spiritual path as well. The, the energy is whether you stay with something or you walk away and leave something uh, behind you. Um, and that could be, again, a career path, a job, maybe bringing that to a close, deciding to take early retirement. For some of you, I am also feeling relationship energy. You're trying to make a decision about whether to continue to invest in a significant relationship in your life. Um, or you're waiting for your partner. Yeah, it feels like you've come to a, a point in your relationship, whether it's a natural point in your relationship or because something's happened, do I want to continue investing in this or your, the, the other person is considering, you know, if we move past this point, there needs to be changes made. We need to, you know, maybe go to the next level, whatever that might mean for you. And so there's this decision-making space and there's a lot of stress and anxiety kind of rolled up into it, Leo. Again, be vigilant about that, regardless of which side of the story you're on. But it looks like we transition... And I have to say, too, that those of you who are feeling this stress and anxiety about making a decision or waiting on a decision, uh, I, I feel like there's some old thinking patterns or old belief systems kind of tied up in there that you're going to be, regardless of what how this specific situation turns out, you're going to be leaving some old behavior patterns or old habits, old ways of thinking behind as well. What a great time of year to do it, right? I mean, that's what New Year's resolutions are supposed to be about. So moving on into around the second week or so of January, time being fluid, of course, some of you, this may be already going on and continuing through January. Some of you, it may um, not begin until we, we actually get into more into January 2018. So right after that, we have the Knight of Wands and the Ace of Cups. I don't feel like this waiting energy, whether regardless of which side of the story you're on, Leo, I don't feel like this waiting energy is going to be lasting very long or lasting too much longer if it's been going on for a while. Because uh, the Knight of Wands energy kind of comes charging in there. So knights are the bringers, the deliverers of the tarot. They typically represent, uh, when you see them, they usually represent something being brought to you or you delivering something uh, uh, an offer, an opportunity of some kind. They also represent the speed at which a situation or an offer opportunity arrives or shows up. 
Uh, this could also represent the person who's bringing something to you or the speed at which, you know, uh, the situation is moving. Out of all four of the knights, the knight of wands is the fastest because he's governed by the element of fire, which is the element which rules uh, the suit of wands. And the tarot, this is very dynamic, fluid energy, and it's all about change, movement, action, power, creative, manifesting energy. So this could be you making a decision very fast, very rapidly. Um, and it could just be that after this long period of thinking, you finally come to this point where you've decided what you're going to do and you decide there's no time to be wasted, which is often a fire sign uh, trait. This could also be you as well, Leo. And it, it could represent another Leo Aries Sagittarius that's the significant person in this relationship too, particularly for those of you who are waiting on some kind of choice or decision from someone else. So there's one coming in quite quickly or you're, you know, maybe after this long period of agonizing over this, you're making a decision quickly uh, or it's being made. And it's actually quite lovely energy as you move through it because the Knight of Wands is bringing an, an emotional new beginning with them, whether it's you or, or someone else. We have the Ace of Cups here as well. Cups is water energy. That's the element which governs the suit of, of cups. There's a strange glare. Uh, aces represent the number one, so they always represent new beginnings, new opportunities, a uh, promise, potential, starting a new path which uh, may manifest and grow if it's carefully, if it's taken care of, uh, into something quite lovely because aces are like seeds. They contain a lot of promise and potential uh, in the beginning, but they have to be, you know, planted and nurtured and taken care of so that they can grow to their full manifestation. So this is emotions uh, in the tarot, the suit of cups is about the emotional feeling aspect of your life. It also includes relationships. So it's new beginnings of an emotional nature. And in the Empire position, this is lovely, beautiful new beginnings. Sometimes the Ace of Cups can represent new love and romance. It could be that some of you have met someone recently or will be meeting somebody uh, in January 2018, you know, potential new love and romance there. Um, it could be, and I'm feeling too, like for a lot of you, not all of you, of course, because there's so many of you watching, it's going to be different. But I'm feeling like there's a large portion of Leos out there for whom, if this is resonating in the relationship area of your life, this is an already established relationship. Perhaps you went through a, a difficult period, maybe something happened of some kind, one or the other of you, or maybe both of you together is trying to make a decision whether it's this is worth continuing on, depending on what you have, is it enough to kind of push you through the hard times and, and have you move forward into a deeper uh, kind of connection and commitment. And for some of you, I feel like uh, what's the decision that's being made, it's kind of like waiting, 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 and then all of a sudden everything's happening. I feel like it's it could be a record reconciliation energy, or the Ace of Cups can represent uh, a new emotional waking, the heart opening up again, having a new start within an already established relationship. It's kind of like we're making an agreement to leave all the old stuff and the stuff that doesn't work and all the grudges and all the he said, she said, and the blame and the pointing fingers. We're going to leave it behind us. We're going to do everything that we can to move forward into a new beginning, into this relationship, into a new road. We're leaving a lot of stuff behind, including baggage from the past. And this could be in relationships. It could be, you know, what maybe what they did to you or what you did to them or the mistakes that you make because we all make them in relationships, right? whether it's love and romance, whether it's in a family relationship or friendships. Uh, and again, is this could be an in a, uh, the job, f f career, finance area of your life, although I feel like it's more, a bit more emotionally, personally connected, some kind of relation, significant relationship for a lot of you. Some of you I'm feeling too, as you're transitioning out of the old year into the new year, this is internal changes. It could be this emotional new awakening. It's not with anybody else in particular because not everybody out there is partnered either. It could just be you're making decisions at the end of the year and moving into the new year, you know, resolutions. I'm going to leave this this way of thinking behind. I'm going to leave this old behavior pattern behind, which is always about a way of thinking. I'm leaving this behind. I'm making the decision to do this. All this past baggage I've been carrying around with me, and I'm moving into a new future. I'm starting off the new year. I'm moving into a new future, and I'm leaving a lot of baggage from the past behind. Um, whether this is about relationships or just yourself or, uh, you know, the resolution kind of energy, which is what the next grouping of cards really represents. We have the Eight of Cups, the Walking Away card, the Six of Cups, which is a card 
uh, strongly associated with the past, childhood, nostalgia, reminiscence, roots of origin can sometimes represent travel back to see parents, relatives, where you grew up. It's a card that, that has a lot of connection to the past, particularly from childhood or, or the long ago past. And it's uh, crowned by the Eight of Cups, which is a card of leaving behind ultimately that which doesn't work for you anymore. It can be a card that represents being disappointed, disillusioned, something hasn't turned out, or it's just run its course, you're leaving it behind definitively. This is not really so much a decision-making card. Uh, this man's already made up his mind. He's gone through all of these cups, at least the implication is he's tasted and drunk from most, if not all of these cups. And at the end of it, it's just turned out not to be what he wanted leaving that behind and then clarified by the six of cups which is a card of the past some of you it could be you know you may be making a decision or somebody else may be making a decision maybe some of you this relationship is not going to be continuing forward because it's just it isn't right for either of you it's it's you maybe leaving it behind some of you um, you may be moving ahead in this relationship, uh, regardless of who's, uh, you know, kind of what, who made the decision or if you made the decision together. And there's, there's a coming back together, either a reconciliation energy, or you're making a decision, you know, whatever hard times, whatever it is that we've just been through, we're making a conscious decision to leave the, the, the hurt, the, the blame, all of that in the past to the best of our abilities and move on with a better and deeper understanding and awareness of ourselves and each other. Um, some of you, this is going to be baggage from the past that you're leaving behind. I mean, we're just transitioning out of the holiday season. That can be bring up a lot of issues around family, close family, extended family too. And it could be that you're literally and figuratively leaving, you know, some stuff behind as well, or you've decided to, you know, um, break old habits, patterns, ways of thinking, you're leaving that behind as well, making some healthy New Year's resolutions. But whatever it is you're leaving behind, it's associated with the past and we no longer want to take it forward, continue to carry it forward with us, especially into the new year. Beautiful energy. And again, uh, time-wise, it's an imp you know uh, uh, the most appropriate time of year to start it. So we end January uh, 2018 or we come to about the end of it with a very powerful combination of cards. We have the world and the magician. Very powerful cards. The world represents a completion point, a major completion point. It's the last card in the tarot. We we begin with the fool, who the fool has, is, starts with the zero. He's the first card in the tarot. And everything after that, all the other cards, the suits, it's all about the fool, i.e. our journey through life, all the lessons we learn, trial and error, growing, uh, maturing, evolving as human beings, which is why we're here, until we reach the last card in the chart, which is the world. We've made it to the top of the mountain. Um, we're feeling very good about ourselves, and we pause to take a moment to kind of reflect, look back over everything uh, that we've been through, all the things that we accomplished, all the things that we decided not to, you know, and, uh, I, and it's always kind of surprising at what we were able to accomplish maybe that we thought we weren't and taking a moment also to consider what lies ahead in our future again a beautiful time of the year to any time is a good year any time of the year is a good time for this but the end of the year beginning of new year is always uh, a, a especially beautiful time to have this energy now the world is is accompanied by the magician a very powerful card uh, the magician is a very powerful person uh, when the magician shows up, it's almost always a sign to that you have everything that you need in order to accomplish whatever it is that you want to create, build and manifest whatever it is that you want particularly in looking behind at everything perhaps you didn't think that you were able to accomplish uh, and looking forward into the future, any new goals, uh, changes that you want to make, resolutions, whatever it is that you're leaving behind because this is a general reading, there's so many of you watching, whatever this thing is that you're leaving behind that has a strong baggage with the past attached to it, you are more than capable of doing it. The magician has walked a long road already. He's What does he do? He creates for his audience and he's worked long and hard to get to where he's at. Uh, he's learned through trial and error, success, failure, triumph, and defeat. And he's reached a point in his craft where you can see that he's juggling the main symbols from each of the four uh, suits in the tarot, the pentacle, the wand, the sword, and the cup. He's reached a point uh, 
where he has all the knowledge now that he needs, all the experience, the tools, the wisdom uh, to build, create, manifest whatever it is that he wants uh, because of all the, the long work and experience and the trial and error that he's gone through. So he has everything that it takes now. Uh, he's the magician now. He has everything that he needs in order to create, build, and manifest, uh, basically carve out his own destiny, whatever goals he has, he knows how to accomplish them or, you know, how to figure out how he, he wants to accomplish them. It's a very powerful and somewhat independent card too. And for some of you, for a lot of you, again, this is an, a, a more than appropriate time of year to kind of pause, reflect back on everything that we've been through, the things that we've accomplished, uh, perhaps the things that we didn't do so well at, um, good decisions, bad decisions, and taking a look at really how far we've come and looking at what we want moving forward into the future, particularly starting uh, this new year, January 2018. And remember that you have everything within you to accomplish, build, and move, and move forward, and go on, Leo. Even if for some of you, whatever the situation is, whether this is in the job or career path part of your life, or whether this is in the relationship area of your life, any kind of relationship, even if it, even if you do, even if part of what you leave behind is an actual person or a relationship, or whether you're moving on with someone else, Whatever it is that you want moving forward in your life, you can accomplish. Remember that, in a, that a, the important part of that is leaving behind, cutting off, cutting out, pruning that which no longer works for us. Sometimes as we move into the future that we want and we're working on building, creating, and manifesting, when as we move forward, sometimes, you know, we have to realize that some people aren't going to, you know, What's the saying that some people aren't going to come along for the journey with us too, and that's part of it as well. Um, but for those of you for whom that might be the case, it's always because there's something better, uh, a relationship that's better for you too as well and healthier for you. So remember that you have everything that it takes to move forward and accomplish what you want in this next new year. And that energy is really quite lovely and palpable uh, towards the last half of January as you're leaving all these things behind which no longer work for you. Um, your overall energy and advice for the month is a star card, beautiful card, one of my favorites. This is a card of renewed hope, faith, and optimism. And I actually feel, though it's, it could, couldn't possibly work out the same for everybody, but I actually feel like for the majority of Leos out there, Whatever we end de December and begin January with this sense of anxiety about, you know, a decision, a choice that we need to make or that we're waiting on somebody else to make or we're waiting, you know, for, we're waiting for this, we're trying to figure it out. I feel like it, it doesn't last too much into January, even if it's been going on for a time. And really what you're moving into is beautiful. It is a new emotional awakening for you. It is a new beginning for you. Um, and if it's a relationship issue, I feel like a lot lot of you, uh, maybe even the majority of you, are going to be moving forward in a better and healthier way within your relationships as well. The star card is a card of hope, faith, optimism, trusting in divine timing and intuition, even if you can't see the plan, even if you can't see how it's going to play out. It's one of the wish fulfillment cards. It's the reason she's, she's completely emptying her reservoirs of water out, emptying her pitchers of water out completely into this body of water because she trusts that when she needs her pictures refilled, they will be because the source is limitless. God's spirit, your angels, guides, trusting in the plan for you. It's for your joy and fulfillment. Um, and having that almost childlike faith and confidence that um, as you move forward into the future, even if you can't see ahead very far, uh, that it's where you're supposed to be. Divine timing and orchestration here. Renewed hope, faith, and confidence. This is usually shows up after a period, this energy, after a period of difficulty, like when someone's been sick for quite a while and they begin to recover. They went through a bad breakup, but they're starting to believe again, kind of a sickness into health, winter into spring, darkness into light, old year into new year. Beautiful overall energy for the month of January. It's like something comes in, there's a new emotional awakening, a new hope, faith, uh, confidence. Um, yes, I am in control of my destiny. I am in control of this. And uh, the things that I'm not in control of are in the hands of God's spirit, your angels and guides, divine timing and orchestration. And they love you. So of course, they want the same joy and fulfillment for you that you want for yourself. So trusting in yourself and trusting in that as well, Leo. Beautiful, powerful energy um, to move into 2018 with you. Lovely reading. So happy to deliver it to you.
Uh, again, if any of you are interested in any personal one-on-one -on -one reading with me, just go to my YouTube channel's homepage, click on that About button for more information. Um, Take a good look at the year overview and outlooks. It's a great time of year to order one. In addition to all the other types of readings I do, feel free to email me directly at maggie, the number one mcguire at gmail.com. I would be delighted to work with you and set up a reading for you just as quickly as we can. And for those quick answers to quick questions, you can also find me on the smartphone app, Instant Go 24-7. Um, Assuming, of course, I'm not occupied or asleep at the time. So uh, I will see you all again in a couple of weeks for the January 2018 mid-month readings. And until then, Leo, as always, I wish you joy, peace, blessings, and a happy life. And I hope uh, that this new year is a beautiful and bright one. So take care, and I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye-bye.